Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. This is one of the favorite graphs of climate alarmists. The idea is that it shows a linear decrease in the Arctic sea ice minimum during September since 1979. But something doesn't look quite right about this trend. The minimum in recent years has been higher than it was 15 years ago and 10 years ago. So instead of plotting a straight line, let's plot a moving average instead. When we do that, we can see that the decline stopped at least a decade ago. So the first problem with this graph is that they're drawing the wrong shaped curve. It's not a straight line. The next question is, why did they start their graph in 1979 and not show earlier years? The National Snow and Ice Data Center and NASA say that the satellite record began in 1979. This is a good story, except for the fact that it isn't true. The 1990 report of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said, Satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. The American Navy Joint Ice Center has produced weekly charts which have been digitized by NOAA. In 1972 to 1975, sea ice extent was significantly less. And we can see that in the United Nations graph. Ice extent was much lower in the early 1970s, and it peaked in 1979. So by starting their graphs at the peak year, they can create a linear fake downwards trend. What they're doing is hiding critical data. The 1995 United Nations report showed the same thing. The ice peaked in 1979 and was much lower around 1974. But in the 2001 report, the same United Nations report where they erased the medieval warm period, the IPCC also erased the low extent of the early 1970s. In the 2001 report, a lot of ice magically appeared around the year 1974, which didn't exist in their prior report. This graph shows the data tampering which occurred between 1990 and 2001. In the 1990 report, sea ice greatly increased during the 1970s, but in the 2001 report, it decreased. And if we go back to the 1985 report of the Department of Energy, we can see that sea ice during the 1950s was much lower than it was during the 1970s. In 1958, the New York Times reported, some scientists estimate that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was a half century ago, and that even within the lifetime of our children, the Arctic Ocean may open, enabling ships to sail over the North Pole. Two U.S. submarines surfaced at the North Pole during 1958. I find the last paragraph of this article particularly interesting. Although the idea that a solid ice sheet covers the central Arctic has lingered stubbornly in the popular fancy, the northern cap of ice worn by our planet is actually a thin crust, on the whole only about 7 feet thick. In 1958, the North Pole was covered by about 2 meters of sea ice. And now, 64 years later, the sea ice at the North Pole is about 2 meters thick, just like it was in 1958. But if we go back to around the time when Stonehenge was built, there was no ice in the Arctic at all. Mean July temperatures along the northern coastline of Russia may have been 2.5 to 7 degrees Celsius warmer than they are now. Trees grew all the way to the edge of the Arctic Ocean in Canada, where the tree line is now 80 to 100 kilometers farther south. This occurred when carbon dioxide levels were much lower than they are now. There's no evidence to support the idea that carbon dioxide controls Arctic temperatures. Now let's take another look at why climate alarmists start their sea ice graphs in 1979. 1979 was the coldest year on record in Iceland after 40 years of sharp cooling. Temperatures in Iceland are cyclical, not linear. 1979 was also the coldest winter on record in the United States. Like in Iceland, U.S. temperatures are cyclical, not linear. Temperatures in the eastern United States and eastern Arctic follow the multi-decadal oscillation, which was very low around the year 1979. The peak years of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation occurred around 1878. 
In 1878, there was no winter at all in Minnesota. In 1877, New South Wales set their all-time record temperature at Burke. There was a worldwide drought and famine which killed tens of millions of people in India, China, and South America. As I stated before, climate is cyclical, not linear. What climate alarmists do with the sea ice data is they draw a straight line through one leg of a cyclical wave. They hide all of the older data and pretend that they don't notice that sea ice is increasing once again. What they're doing is not science, rather it is propaganda. Fifteen years ago this week, Al Gore predicted an ice-free Arctic by the year 2014 when he received his Nobel Prize. But there's more sea ice now than there was back then. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. In the last few months, it has been harder and harder to misinterpret the signs that our world is spinning out of kilter. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this scam for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Tokinupla on the web at realclimatescience.com.